Hey there, Hobby Homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. Today, we want to talk to you about the things that we might do differently if we were digging our pond today. We had our pond dug two years ago in August, and I can tell you, this video is not going to be a video about regrets because we love our pond and we get a lot of good out of it. It's one of the best investments I have made. But there are definitely some things that I wish I had known at the time that we were building this pond that I could have done to prepare and possibly make the end result come out better. If you've watched some of our other, other videos, you know that uh, we live life on somewhat of a budget and we have to be uh, conscious of how much we're spending if we're, we want to accomplish the goals that we've set out to accomplish. We had certain limitations just coming out of the gate with the amount of money that we had to spend on the pond. And so that dictated a lot of the decisions that we made. However, there were some things that wouldn't have really cost us much, if any extra, that we could have done to make this a little bit better. There are also some things that would have been worth saving for if we had planned ahead. So I wanna talk about those things. That way, if you're in the planning stages of your pond, you can think about those things and kind of plan ahead and maybe your result will be even better than the one that we got. But we love our pond, it's beautiful. Uh, we've got a nice, cool fall day. I've got me a fire going over there. Caden's gonna be home from school here pretty soon. We're gonna do a little bit of fishing, so it's gonna be a good time. What you got? Luca. Nice. What'd you catch him on? Some rubber bait. <laughs> a little bitty chunk of rubber worm because we couldn't find any night crawlers, huh? Nice. So if you're thinking about building a pond on your farm or homestead or your piece of property, I will tell you it is a huge asset because you can get a lot of entertainment out of it as well as it's great for the environment, the wildlife, draws in the animals and all of those things. So you really can't go wrong with building yourself a pond. The, the fishing, the kayaking, the uh, just having a place to set up and have a fire and cook hot dogs and hang out or cook fish, whatever you want to do. Uh, a pond is just a great feature to have around on your property. So I would definitely recommend it. It's a good investment. Now the pond that we built is between a half and three quarters of an acre and it's about 16 to 18 feet deep when it is full. It's a nice size pond. It's plenty good enough that even when we lose some water or we go through times of drought, it's going to sustain the life that is in it. So that's worked out really well for us. To tell you a little bit about the process of building our pond, this was a completely wooded area here that was kind of already in a little bit of a ravine. And so they took an entire day just to clear off all of the woods and, and trees and stumps and everything out of the way, as well as enormous rocks that they had to push out of the way. Our pond took five full days to dig, and that was with two and sometimes three pieces of equipment running those days. Our budget was initially $8,000, and we ended up going to $9,000 to have the work done to build our pond. And that was really all of the funds that I had allocated for the project, and I wanted to get as big of a piece of property underwater for that $8,000 as I could possibly get. And that's part of why we went ahead and sunk another thousand dollars into it there at the end. The purpose of that was to get the water to go back into the woods over there and just kind of spread the, the water level out just a little bit. So we wanted to go just a couple of feet deeper with the pond. That worked out fantastic for us and uh, so that was a good move. I couldn't be happier with what I got for the money because honestly, I mean, this is fantastic. It's a great place. Caden loves to come up here and fish. Everybody loves to come up here and fish. Uh, my daughter likes to go on hikes and she'll hike up here and then sit by the pond, have little picnics and that sort of thing. So it's just a great thing for us to have here on the property. And we are very blessed to have that here. Now, that being said, there are some things that I would do differently if we were starting the dig on this pond today. And I'll just go ahead and start with the biggest thing right up front. The number one thing that I would do is I would locate a source of good solid clay that will seal the bottom of a pond and make sure that I had some of that on site for finalizing the dig. I can tell you that one of the biggest stresses of having this pond has been the leakage that has come with it. It has leaked from the very beginning not to a point to where we've had to worry about our fish or anything like that, but 
it's a little bit unsightly when it's three feet low at the end of summer and it's just not as pretty as it could be so that's part of the issue but you know a lot of people recommend digging much shallower ponds than what we have here and so if you dug a six or eight foot pond and it was leaking to this extent you'd have some problems you'd have some fish that are struggling to stay alive so you need to plan ahead because if you don't have the kind of money to sink into this project where you're going to have soil samples and do all of the prep work that is recommended for a big pond build then you're likely going to run in some, into some issues with leaking. And all you have to do is do a little search on YouTube and you'll see there are lots of people that either complain about their pond leaking or they're looking for a fix, looking for a product that's going to fix it because their water's leaking out of their pond. A lot of pond owners experience that. But one of the main things that you can do is line that pond with a couple of feet of clay to make sure that you seal up the bottom because even if your soils are pretty good clay, you may have a little bit of sand mixed in there that causes some seepage. Or in our case, I think that we have some rock crevices that were basically exposed or nearly exposed to the point that with the 18 foot of depth and the pressure of water that's on that, it's pushing the water down through those rock crevices and the water's getting out. So if we had taken the time and the money to line the bottom, the deepest part of this pond with a couple of feet of clay, I don't think we'd be having the leaking problems that we have. We never have any dampness on the backside of our dam. We never see any water anywhere leaking out of this pond. So it's gotta be going down. We are actually up here on top of the hill, about 200 feet higher than our house right now. So if you think about the groundwater level, I mean, we're way up above the water table. So if this is not perfectly sealed, you can expect to lose some water and never see it. And that's what we're running into. So the biggest advice I can give you is put some time and thought into making sure that your pond is properly sealed. That may be ordering in some bentonite that can be mixed in with the soil you have on site in order to seal that up. It may be locating a good source of clay to seal it up. Whatever the case may be, have a plan for making sure that you've got a good solid seal on your pond. Because my builders dug a keyway and did all the things with the dam right. The dam is not leaking. It's our soil that's causing this pond to leak. So just think ahead with that and make plans to properly seal your pond. The extra bit of investment will be well worth your while. We did some treatments on our pond to try and help seal that up and they are not cheap. We spent as much as we could afford to spend to try a product and that 700 bucks basically just went to waste because it didn't help our problem any and it was 700 bucks. That's a lot of money. And to really properly treat a pond with some of these products that are out there, you're talking two, three, four, five grand to treat a pond the size of ours. So trying to fix a leak after the fact is almost not an option because it's just not affordable. So it's much better to take a little time, save the extra money, bring in the clay, seal that pond up right from the, from the beginning. The next thing that I would recommend and this is something that a lot of people I think miss out on is pre-plan your fish habitat. Now here's the thing, I did a little bit of pre-planning, but not enough. I had these ideas that, well, we'll build these little fish structures and put in the pond and that will work out well. But I didn't do enough research to realize that I was missing out on some key elements. If I had had some pea gravel hauled in for bluegill beds, then I could have fixed a spot and spread pea gravel in there and had a better spot for my fish to spawn. And that would have better supported the population of bluegill in the pond. But I didn't know that at the time, so I didn't plan for that. I put in some fake trees, I put in some Christmas trees, I put in some rocks here and there. Um, I stacked some cinder blocks. Um, I did what I knew to do at the time, but I didn't have a complete plan for my fish habitat. And that's an important part of a pond if you want to sustain life and have a good healthy fish and your minnows have a place to hide so they don't get eaten right away. The whole cycle is helped by pre-planning your habitat and giving your fish a good fighting chance to live. In our situation, our pond started filling like two weeks after the guys left, we had four, five, six feet of water in the pond. It started filling up quickly and by then we were scrambling to get everything built and put in the pond where we wanted it so that we could have some fish habitat in here. So 
By the time your pond's built, it may be too late. So plan ahead for your fish habitat. Now the next thing that I would recommend planning for is your final landscaping or grade around your pond. Now this may be something that seems like it should go without saying, but honestly, when I brought my builders on site, I just told them, listen, I've got $8,000. I want as big a hole as I can get for $8,000. All I was thinking about is a big old hole to hold fish. And I figured I'd, I'd doctor it up and make it look pretty after they left, and that would be kind of fun anyway. So they gave me exactly what I asked for. Now, the problem with that is the way that we laid this pond out and dug it and did everything we could to make it as deep as possible and hold as much water as possible, I'm left with some pretty steep banks that are almost too steep to grow anything on that are left out of the water over here. So because I didn't really properly plan that out, my pond is not as pretty as it could be. And that's not the fault of the builders. That's my fault because they gave me exactly what I asked for. But I didn't really have a plan or extra funds allocated for the grass seed and, and straw and all the things that I would need to properly landscape it when I was finished. So I kind of, I got some hay from one of the neighbors and I bought a couple of bags of grass seed here and there as I could afford them. And I started spreading it out and trying to make it look pretty. But the fact remains is I've got one edge of the bank over there near the camp area that is a pretty steep drop off and I don't quite know what to do with it. And once the pond's full of water, it's a little bit harder to do that kind of work. So I will take your recommendations on what to do with that edge of the pond and how to go about making that look nice. But I will also advise, have a plan in place to make your final grade and your final landscaping around your pond look nice because that's one of the things that we could have done to make our pond a little bit better. Now guys, I'll tell you, I'm talking numbers of eight or $9,000 to dig a half to three quarter acre pond, but that was two years ago. And a lot of things have gotten a lot more expensive since then. So you probably can plan on spending quite a bit more than that. At the time they were running their excavator and dozer for about $100 an hour. And I'm sure that's gone up because fuel prices have more than doubled at this point. So you can expect it to cost a little more than it cost me to dig this one, but that being said, the value that this has brought to my life and my family's life, I would easily invest twice as much in building the pond again. There are definitely some things that I would do differently to try to make it a little bit better, but you know, we do what we know to do and we, we do the best we can with what we have to work with. And so at the time I didn't know these things, but now I do I'm sharing them with you in hopes that when you decide to dig your pond, it'll turn out just a little bit better than maybe it would have if you weren't aware of these things. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate you following us here on uh, Peaks Peak Hobby Homestead. If you're not a subscriber, be sure and hit that subscribe button for us. Like our videos, share them with your friends, and I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good day. Like when I was about to reel in, he just chomped it. Choked it, huh?